Hey tech heads, Vina here. Are you looking for an electric car that's practical, stylish, and affordable? Well, you've come to the right place. In this video, we're gonna look at the two most affordable options on the market today, the Citroen EC4 and the MG4. Now, both of these cars offer a range of around 200 miles, and that's on a bad day, but there are some key differences between the two that might make one a better fit for you than the other. Today, I wanna compare the two cars based on charging, driving feel, interior, consumption, and a few other tidbits to help you make the best decision for your needs. So, are you ready to find out which car is the winner? Let's get started. First, I wanna talk about charging. So, you might think that Citroën, which is a company with years of experience with EVs behind it, remember the 1995 Saxo Electric, for example, You'd think they'd be an expert in this area, but unfortunately that's not quite true. And the Citroen EC4 is honestly a bit hellish from an EV driver's point of view. For example, do you think you can set a charging limit, perhaps 80% or something? Nope. Do you think you can set a limit on the charging current of the onboard 11 kilowatt charger? Think again, that's another no. Another odd issue with the EC4 is that when you plug into charge, the driver display clearly shows you the charging time plus the battery percentage. Oddly enough, it also shows you the charging speed in kilometers per hour, which doesn't make much sense for an EV, but okay. <laughs> but then say you're waiting in the car while you charge and you wanna turn on your AC or something. Well, at this point, the display just disappears, leaving you in the dark about your charging status. So the only thing that it will show at this point is the range, which shows really nonsensical values, so that's not really much help at all, plus the battery charge indicator, which is this really unclear bar graph that leaves a lot to the imagination. So as opposed to being a useful tool, it feels more like a small revenge on EV drivers. In the winter, the EC4, which has a heat pump, basically doesn't heat the battery at all, so the car still suffers from cold gate, just like first generation cars that only have a passively cooled battery, so thank you Citroen. So right now you may be thinking how good the MG4 is. Everything kind of goes the way an EV driver needs it to. You can set a 6, 8 or 16 amp current charging limit, you can set an upper battery charge limit, when you're charging, you have all the information that you need, including charging power in kilowatts. So this is a clear one zero for MG4. Not to mention that all of this can be set up from the MG4 app. Let's talk about heating or cooling the interior in the Citroen. So you wanna control the temperature in your car using the My Citroen app? Well, sure, but only if your car is charged up 50% or more. A bit strange, right? I have to say the My Citroen app is definitely not winning any awards anytime soon. It has a 3.3 out of 5 star rating on the Google Play Store, I would say for good reason. I have to wonder, could it use a little bit of a revamp? One glaring oversight is that on the main screen, it does not show you clearly your battery percentage, which is like gold to us electric car drivers. Instead, we get another cryptic bar graph and an estimated range in kilometers that to me seems like gets decided with a game of darts or something. So again, not much useful information here and it does beg the question, did any actual electric car users have any say in the design of this thing? Citroen, I expected a little bit more finesse. What about you all? Are you left scratching your head over some of these choices just like I am? MG4 is much better at allowing you to cool or heat your interior remotely from the app. You can even preheat your battery remotely, which can be wonderful in the winter. This feature is called scheduled battery heating, and it's something that EC4 drivers couldn't even dream of because even though the EC4 has a heat pump, it actually doesn't realistically preheat the battery at all. So cold gate is definitely gonna be your friend in the winter. I will say some MG4 drivers report that this feature does not work for them if their car is fully charged and plugged in. This seems to be an app issue that hopefully will get resolved soon. But the fact that this feature is even an option makes this a clear two to nothing for the MG4. One thing I'm really not a fan of in the interior of the EC4 
is the use of that shiny black plastic in the most exposed places. You know the one I'm talking about. Why do car companies keep doing this to us? Okay, I know why it's because they can't make anything cheaper that would look this good in product photos, but come on, at least exercise a little bit of judgment and restraint when deciding where to put it in the car. So if you have experience with this shiny black plastic, as I'm sure most of you do, you already know that this material scratches really easily, gets tarnished very easily, and lets you see every single fingerprint that's ever been put on there. So for good measure, Citroen decided to put it into every place where we touch our fingers. So that's very special, thanks a lot. One of my favorite examples of this is under the touch screen. So it's in the place exactly where you'd wanna rest your hand in order to have a good angle to control it. Also around the gear shift and the cup holders. So where are the days when designers used their brains? These days it seems like the assignment is clear. Make it look good in product photos and who cares what it looks like a month after the car is being used. So as a result, you have an expensive car with tarnished, scratched up, shiny black plastic almost anywhere you look. It's really a joy to behold. The MG4 is significantly more conservative with their use of shiny black plastics. They still couldn't forgive themselves and put a bit around the gear shift. So it does fall just short of perfection, but I still have to give points to MG4 here. So we're going 3-0 for MG4 with almost no shiny plastic in sight. The Citroen EC4's trip computer feels like a bit of a parody. So there's actually a lovely driver display, but this beautiful display only shows you two trip meters that you have to manually zero. It doesn't show you important data, for example, no consumption per trip, no distance traveled since setting off, no distance traveled since your last charge, you know, stuff that you might actually like to know, not gonna find it there. You'll find some useless information displayed in a confusing manner yet again. So for example, it will show you the onboard equipment consumption. That will be displayed in another one of these mystifying bar graphs that Citroen seems to love so much. The MG4 is a different beast. Once again, it seems like somebody may have actually thought about this. In the MG4, the driver display will show you distance traveled since taking off, distance traveled since your last charge, and also an overall summary. So just the kind of stuff you might want to know if you drive an electric vehicle. So that's gonna be another point and a big thumbs up for MG4 for a great onboard computer. Next, let's discuss the steering and the driving feel. So to me, this is the biggest downside about the EC4. I used to drive an e-golf and since switching, I still haven't gotten used to the EC4's steering without getting any feedback from the wheels. So I really do feel cut off from the wheels. I don't feel like I'm very much in control of the car, which makes the whole driving experience not that much fun. Accelerating in the EC4 is also not that fun. So to me, the car just kind of gets you from point A to point B, but the driving experience itself is kind of blah. It's a shame because otherwise the chassis is quite good. Though frankly, I will say that those famous hydraulically stopped dampers are not really that much of a miracle. To me, the chassis in the e-golf, which is conventionally tuned, does a very similar job at bump damping. Of course, those 18 inch wheels on the EC4 are quite comfortable given the size, but to go over a bigger bump and it still bangs up pretty good. But at the end of the day, basically for the steering, I have to give the Citroen EC4 a thumbs down here. The MG4 once again is quite a different story. It's really a joy to drive. As Bjorn put it, it feels like driving a German car. It really has a very well-tuned chassis and everyone that I've spoken to just really enjoys driving it. It's a lot of fun as it should be. So that's another thumbs up for the MG4 which is already four to zero up on the EC4. So finally a chapter where the EC4 has a clear advantage and that is design. So I do think that the exterior design of the EC4 is very well done. It's a beautiful car and I wouldn't change a thing. 
Of course, that just makes all of the unfinished stuff inside that much more frustrating. Now, the car does not have a rear wiper, but it actually doesn't need it. The rear window does stay clean. It does have a spoiler, and ironically, it seems to get more dirty under the spoiler than above it, so that's kind of funny. But still, I've never had to actually clean the rear window yet because I'd have trouble seeing out of it. So as far as exterior design goes, that's definitely a thumbs up for Citroen here. The MG4 is a bit inconsistent in terms of design, especially the SE version, which doesn't have a spoiler. And honestly, I think it looks like it's missing one. The Trophy version does have it, and it looks a bit too sporty. So it might be a bit of a shock and maybe too flashy for more conservative drivers. Still, I would say it looks quite modern, and for the price, it's definitely nothing to be ashamed of. But I will give the points to the EC4 here. So we're at five to one with MG4 still in the lead. Next, let's look at consumption and range. And I actually have nothing to fault the EC4 here. It averages around 15 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers in the summer and around 18 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers in the winter, which I would say is pretty average considering its size, the 100 kilowatts of power and those 18 inch wheels. Personally, I was expecting the EC4 to have a bit higher consumption. Now the range with 46 kilowatt hours of usable battery capacity is exactly as the EV database says. It gets closer to 300 kilometers in the summer and then goes down a bit closer to 200 kilometers when winter comes around. I will say that this is with me driving in normal mode. It is a bit more efficient in eco mode, of course, but I haven't had a chance to measure exactly how much because I never remember to reset my trip meter before driving. The MG4 SE long range with its much higher 125 kilowatts of output averages 17 to 20 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers. Now, users report the range for the SE with 51 kilowatt hour battery to be around 290 kilometers. According to the EV database, it's going to be 345 kilometers in the summer and 250 kilometers in the winter. So I would say that we could call this one a tie with MG4 still in the lead, six to two compared to the Citroen. So that's my comparison of the Citroen EC4 and the MG4. As you can see, there's a lot to unpack and digest here, but wait, there is more. So I actually have two more chapters coming up where I will discuss the lane keep assist and the 360 degree camera functionalities in both cars. And trust me, you don't wanna miss this. If you found this video informative, make sure you smash that subscribe button and ring the notification bell to stay up to date. And hey, while you're down there, drop me a comment. Let me know which feature you're the most curious about. Join our tech loving community and let's ride into the future together. That's it for me for today. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you next time.